Hi, thanks for tuning in. This is a weekend review for the week ending Friday, January 6th, 2023. This is a first video for the new year. I hope you all had a great weekend. I took some time off. It's been a couple weeks since I've done a video, but I think we've got some more stuff to talk about. I want to share some trade ideas I have with the community and take a look at where I think we are in the business cycle. So starting off, we're taking a look at Bed Bath & Beyond, because this was certainly on everyone's radar if you were looking at big movers this week. This and Tesla uh, just had incredible moves to the downside. And if you, if you go back uh, really seven months now, one, two, three, four, five, six months, this thing's down 96%. It's trading like it's going to zero, because it probably is. And the point of me bringing it up isn't to say to buy it, isn't to say to sell it, is that there's a lot of stocks that are going out of business. And I think this is one of them. Let's take a look at S&P 500. Zoom into the monthly. So at this point, we came in, we hit the 50. PPO's back to zero, which is what you want to see. We've bounced into the 10, into the 5, and we've gone sideways. That's it. The level that breaks the higher low pattern is 374.77. If you zoom into the weekly, it came right down into this large engulfing candle and defended the lows, stayed inside. What I will say is there's no trend. It's very obvious there's no trend. ADX is telling you that. But if you don't use ADX, you can just look back, look to the left. Nothing has happened since June. Right? Pe people want to act like, oh, we need this large basing process where we cut the lows. That's what's happened. We're in a large basing process where we've cut the lows. Okay? That's exactly what's happened. You had range contract. You had one outside candle. And again, an outside candle where you don't close below the following candle is nothing. An outside candle where you close above or below the high or low of that candle is generally the start of a much larger move. Notice, big outside candle, the close was 383, closed at 382, the low was 381, so we're inside, inside, bull break. And when you bull break, what that does is it sets up the high of this candle as a potential target. Of note, captured weekly EMA5 has been below it for three weeks. That is a change in character. What's likely happen, what will likely happen is ADX is going to come back to the zero line. Because again, there's no directional movement. And if you look at the daily, you do have a big, big uh, consolidation range. And again, potential for a left shoulder head, right shoulder, if they are to revisit 362. And in the process, as I showed you on the monthly, would be setting up a monthly higher low. So rally up, come down, set up the monthly higher low, and then go from there, just like you did here, right? And it's just like you did here. It has to happen at some point. They have to break the monthly higher low pattern, set a higher low relative to the previous low, and rally higher. And if you look at the weekly, everyone's convinced the weekly's in a um, downtrend. I'm not convinced. There was a high that was set over here. We've now come up and potentially are setting a higher low relative to the last one, which was down here at 368. Rally up, set a low, rally up, set a low, rally up, set a higher low. And it's possible that right here you broke that pattern but you set another high. So it's it's completely debatable. Um, and again, it's all about this monthly chart. Let's take a look at some of the others. I think the strongest sector by far is SMH. Um, same setup on the monthly, okay? No difference there. You look at the weekly, same setup on the weekly. Are we setting this higher low pattern? This is a, a very, very clear, in my opinion, left shoulder head, right shoulder setup. 
the 200 is providing def the demand, the bulls are playing defense. And if you look at the volume, um, as you come up here on the right shoulder, right, you get a peak volume here at the head, increasing volume coming off the low, you have increasing bull volume coming off the low, declining bear volume into the right shoulder. And then if this pattern is to get validated, what will happen is a rally all the way back up to here. Sorry, I misclicked. This is the trading range that she's been in. She peaked below, rallied all the way back in. Um, and so again, could this thing see an all time high? Yes, that is definitely possible. In this year, yes, that is definitely possible. This is the strongest ETF. Um, and again, what needs to happen? PPO resets to zero line, curls up, ADX continues to go higher with price like it did here. All right, this move lower, ADX went lower. It was not confirming trend. This move higher, ADX was confirming trend. And you know what I uh, every now and then you like to take like to look at some Elliott Wave stuff just to help confirm. Wave two comes all the way back down to the wave one. It's exactly what you have here. And if you look at the Fib retrace right into that pocket that I show all the time, that 5618, the healthy retracement. That's not a crash. That is not the right language to use. It's a healthy retracement in a uh, sustained trend. And again, this move here is certainly a monster move, 40%. And if you're using um, 3x ETF, it was way higher, 2x ETF way higher, but the index itself moved 40%. Okay, it didn't even do that right here. That was a 30% move. This was a 40% move. Alright, this is the strongest index. And if this rally continues up to here to 230 again, you will get a golden cross, just like you had on XLF. Okay, you've had the golden cross. XLF is one of the leading um, uh, sectors within the small cap IWM space. If you look at this, this is a golden cross, PPO reset to zero. All the moving averages are what? 1% from each other? 1%. When was the last time that happened? Right here. And when it did happen, you had a massive move, and that was a bear cross. This time you have a bull cross. Okay, it's entirely possible. XLF sets a new all time high this year. It's also possible that she's still just range bound and this is some expanding range. That being said, um, I'm keeping an open mind to what momentum is doing. Momentum and the histogram are positive. They're pointing up. ADX is finally pointing up with price. So this is something to take note of above all the weekly moving averages, above all of them. XLF. This is a big level, guys. This is a really, really big level on the monthly, the quarterly, the yearly timeframes. Okay, PPO reset to the zero line. Histogram is bottoming out. And again, all she really has to do is get above 36 and this thing can sustain a much, much higher rally. And if you look at that, put in the 50% retrace. So here's your move. Again, we see this all the time. One, two, three, four, five. And then a little ABC that re retraces 50% of the move. And that sets up the next rally higher. XLF is something to watch. It is showing relative strength. Do not ignore relative strength. Now that we've talked about XLF, let's look at IWM, who's not showing relative strength, okay? Um, but again, remember I mentioned you need to set up that monthly higher low. That's kind of what's happening here with IWM. Um, in the month of December, she broke the November um, higher low pattern. The low of 174.11 broke. You set a low of 170, and now we're back inside that month. Is that the monthly higher low? Did IWM lead and set a monthly higher low in the month of December? Yeah, it's entirely possible. Zooming into the weekly, this downtrend has been going on for a very long time. Whether you take it from March, whether you take it from November, a year and three months, that's a long time. Okay, trends don't last forever, guys. So what ends up happening 
here is you're either going to get something real massive like this or this downtrends over and this left shoulder head right shoulder type of setup is in play you also have what I've pointed out many times potential for this a b c d e e la sorry it's early this descending triangle is certainly in play again you draw from there you draw from here you draw from here it doesn't really matter it's all subjective the point is this could t potentially be a triangle all right and if it's a triangle it's probably something like this all right and into what into this low at 153 if you look all the way back on the weekly um there isn't really a gap here no so again they filled the gap right there back here in june they filled that gap that was the target and they've just based at that gap they've gone sideways again what happens after a long decline what happens after a large rise in price is a long basing period where things go sideways for a long time okay They undercut or overcut the low. It's immediately bought or sold. And then more sideways action before this ultimately breaks. This level here. That level here. You retest it and then you move. In my opinion, that's where we are right now in the process. We are in a basing process. This process has been going on since June. Okay. Anyways, keep an eye on IWM. Again, big move higher, 50% retrace. Is she going to rally out of here? Is she going to get rejected again at the 200? I'm not taking the sell setup. We've seen this sell setup four or five times now, six times. One, two, three, four, five. This will be the sixth setup. It's not for me. I'm looking the other way. I'm looking for higher prices. Let's take a look at the weakest, QQQ. Obviously, um, the same thing is true with all of these charts. IWM, just like SPY, right? The low of 259.73 is held. So this is just an inside month right now. That PPO is reset. The momentum is really strong to the downside. But as you can tell, it's really not, it hasn't been able to make much more movement lower um, going back to June, the same month XLF bottomed, the same month IWM bottomed all across the board. Um, in terms of what if this isn't the low for, for QQQ, it's probably at 240. Take a look at the weekly closed above the previous week's high. Again, this is still a very bearish looking chart. This is still a really strong downtrend. Um, again, this is the weakest sector. Um, you look at the daily chart, that's an engulfing candle. They need to close above the high of 264, sorry, 269.94 to start the week in order to get any momentum. And again, what are we looking for? Basically a rally to 280. There's a gap up here. There's a gap right there. Again, this is just so Swiss cheesy, it's disgusting. But this decline, I just want you to know, was so steep, it never had a chance. They needed to a base, they needed to do something, rally back. That's what they're doing now. Are they going to cross bull? Histograms at zero, again, ADX at zero. I'm just telling you there's no trend here. There's no trend because all it's done is gone sideways this whole time. And if you look at that low there, really, have we just kind of gone sideways since June, like everything else? It's entirely possible. Let's take a look at TNX. Came into the demand zone. We got that rally. This was the 50% retrace of this move. We rallied off. This is ABC structure. And now we're overlapping. This high here, overlap. It's telling me that this has got a lot, way, a lot more in the tank. And again... Here's that five wave structure. We don't trade this. We do this in hindsight. 
what are we looking for? The same thing again, something down to three. Maybe even lower, maybe a lot lower, but I'm not gonna cross that bridge yet um, until we get below the 200. Looking at this, you can see we're back at this trend line, okay? So if this trend line breaks, it's time for bonds. It is time for bonds, all right? This monthly downtrend has broke. It's broken the downtrend. It's back tested the 200, it's held. So what am I expecting here? Come fill this gap. What gap? 313. Come on down, fill that gap. Now, ideally what should happen, same thing is true here, one, two, three, four, five. All right, have we, have we finished this move? Possibly. It's also possible that this is just a one, two, three, four, five. So I'm very open-minded when it comes to this. Um, are they done raising rates discussion? I think they could keep raising rates. The point is what I'd like to see is something like this. A large horizontal price movement stability in rates this is unstable this august 2020 move of 50 cents to four dollars is not sustainable taking a look at the bonds you have the exact opposite sorry guys miss hit monthly showing monthly higher low lots of volume coming in here again just an inside month can't get above monthly five slope of monthly five um, ema5 sma10 bear cross happened back here in january 2022 it's an avoid for me i don't want to own things that look like that i need things to go sideways to fix that you know and if you want i can even pull that up again on spy and show you and focus exactly on that but this to me looks like the downtrend is trying to break, okay? And volume is coming in, but ADX is not confirming any move. So I don't think we're ready just yet. I think you can get above 109, it's it's time for bonds. I'm just going back to show you what I mean with that monthly, and I'll show you some, some charts where it's a little bit better, but see the monthly EMA5, SMA10, bear cross happened here in March, 2022. And we're at that point now where a up month will cause a bull cross. Okay, so you must pay attention, but this is still in a bear configuration. You take a look at XLF, it already had the cross. We already have the EMA5 SMA10 bull cross. Look at SMH, the other strongest. It's right there. It's in the, it could be in the process of doing it. IWM, it, I, EMA5 SMA10 have never been this, this close. And again, these trends don't last forever, guys. They last a year. Where are we? A year and two months okay you look for this to reverse all right that being said let's take a look at gold gold has been on everyone's it should be on everyone's radar when i look at this monthly ppo reset to zero cr crossing up adx rising with price ppo bull cross would really do a lot ema5 sma10 bull cross just happened um, I will say this is a pretty large move off the lows. What I would look for last time you had a move like this, right, of 18%. You look for a little bit of sideways, okay? That's what I'm looking for. And if we pull up, the reason that red block was there, you know, I love these fibs. We've done the 50%. We're into that 61%. So this is where you would look for sellers to return, okay? And if they don't return at 176, you're coming all the way back up here. But really, what is this pattern that we're looking at? This is a large cup and handle, okay? And how do you play cup and handles? You play them like breakouts. You don't buy until above 185. This is all range bound. We're all stuck in a range, okay? This is a big range. We want things to be breaking out. We want trends to be changing. Right now, we have no evidence that that has happened over here. It could be happening, okay? ABC correction into a rising 50, just like you had on SPY. Sound familiar? Just like you had on SPY, the monthly PPO resets to zero, just like you have on gold, just like you have on the Qs. They're all doing the same thing. They're all positively correlated. And why is that? Because they're all negatively correlated to the US dollar or Dixie. 
or UUP. Okay, and since UUP is put in its top back in September, right, everything else has been given a chance to rally. September lows for gold. You go back to the dollar and you can see this thing is kind of played out, in my opinion. EMA5, SMA10, bear cross on the monthly. PPO pointing down, histogram back to zero. This thing could do something like this before it's ready to roll again. Okay, and so I'm not, I don't like to look at things that have already been rallying for this long. And then put in the EMA5, SMA10, bear cross on the monthly. That's not what I'm, I'm interested in doing. If you look at the weekly, Strong momentum to the downside, pulled all the way back to the 50, um, and is now pulling in, really pulling into the 200 is what it looks like. So again, that weakness in the dollar is what's going to enable strength in everything else. I do want to point out some names that I like. We're going to go look at the monthlies, and I'll show you why. ESE, look at the monthly. PPO bull cross went negative. Now it's looking like that nice angle of attack above all the monthly moving averages. Again, range bound, yes. Broke the downtrend and is in a very obvious uptrend, okay? Keep an eye on ESE, OII, PPO reset to zero, bull cross positive above almost all the moving averages. This one could be targeting uh, the 200 right now. Again, this is a triple top, so above 1820 is a breakout you want to watch. Um, this is something that I, I am keeping my eye on. How could we not talk about the China names? KWeb finally getting that EMA5 SMA10 bull cross on the monthly, what you want to see. But I will say, uh, if you zoom into the weekly here, this does have a potential for a broadening pattern. So watch out, could be heading all the way back down here, okay? And yes, we've broken the downtrend. Yes, this PPO looks great. Yes, we have the monthly EMA5 SMA10 bull cross. That is all very, very good, but still below the weekly 200, still below the monthly 50, right? Still below a declining monthly 20. This is a still a longer term downtrend, so you must remain cautious. What I will say is the daily could be setting up that, that that golden cross that we look for. Um, and again, this is a huge base. Okay, this is a huge base. Is she breaking out right now? So you got to be cautious, right? She could look like she's pulling in a breakout rally to 37 and then right back inside. And that is a beautiful sell setup. So this thing's either going to be going, you know, to 60 um, in a hurry. These are the gaps that still need to be filled. Or she's going to fill these gaps in reverse. But when I look at this, this is a nice little beautiful bull flag that could be targeting 45. I'm keeping an open mind. This definitely needs to be on everyone's radar. The leader within the ETF is BABA. BABA is doing the same thing. Is this an expanded pattern? Is BABA heading to 130 while, Bob, while uh, KWeb heads to 36? That's entirely possible. But these names need to be on your chart. As I posted here at the start of the year, in no particular order, these are the names that I see having the, the highest probability of outperforming. Take a look at BA, which is in Dow Jones Industrial Average. There's nothing wrong with this chart. This is a very, very strong looking chart. Okay, this is a breakout. This is coiling still technically, still coiling, could come up and set a lower high relative to 280. Okay, so just keep an eye on this one. Still way below the zero line, and ADX is still at zero, no trend on the monthly, okay? But you do have on the monthly the EMA5 SMA10 bull cross, so keep an open mind that this will continue higher. That being said, here's a declining 200, slope of the 50 is still down on the weekly, so you got to give this thing time to do more sideways action. Um, but it is something to keep an eye on for dips into the 50, does it back test this, this trend line? Okay. Um, but again, this is already a massive move that's happened. And these are your trailing stops. You see the green line? That's your trailing stop. 
if that line is broken, she's going to come back to the 50 or the 200. Keep an eye on these names. In my opinion, again, you go back to the start of the year, they have the highest probability of outperforming. Uh, Crocs. As we've been long for a long time, just now did the 50% retrace. So it is possible this thing is done. Okay, and this is a triple bearish divergence. Not what you want to see if you're bullish. That is somewhat of a doji look at the 50% retrace. So is this a big move down? Here's your 50% and we're going to go do this. Definitely, definitely could be happening. What I will say is ADX is at 50. This PPO is much higher and we're still above all the moving averages on the weekly, all the moving averages on the monthly. Okay. So let's let's pump the brakes before we get uber bearish. Um, it is entirely possible that this is more sideways, but this is a bull flag that's still targeting 160s. That's a bull flag pattern that has not hit its target. Okay. Whether you draw it from there. We drop from here. It doesn't matter. We're not nowhere near the target. This is a big bull flag pattern. Okay, give it time. It can come all the way back down to 101 and be perfectly healthy. So watch these names. Again, I, I call this out to start the year. These are the names that I think have the highest probability of doing well. Um, SMCI not doing as hot as the others, but PPO back to zero. And again, that's what you want to see before the next thrust higher monthly um, very extended from the zero line so the risk is a lot higher very extended from the 20 but this is still a breakout okay this is a breakout this you know could go way way higher in my opinion um, yeah so that's all I got for the trade ideas take a look at spy versus TLT still favoring equities but this could be rolling over a spy versus gld could be rolling over here in favor of gold in favor of bonds what is that telling you that's telling you that the risk off bonds gold and cash cash being what risk off outperformed in 2022 they could continue to outperform. It is entirely possible. So keep an eye on gold. Keep an eye on TLT. Keep an eye on SPY. It's still very unclear. Um, but these ratios are what we're watching. And this is the performance year to date. Here's the beginning of the year. China stocks leading. CRISPR, which is within ARC, leading. Again, we didn't even look at ARC. This video is a little bit longer than I wanted it to be, but that's okay. Sometimes we got to do that to start the year. I mean, has ARC bottomed? Did she finally hit her target? No way to say. What do we want to? What do we want to see? We want to see EMA five cross above SMA ten. We don't have that, so I can't say that she's bottomed. But CRISPR is a top performing stock this year. Cut below the low and now bouncing higher. And if we take a look here at these. You're seeing a lot of the same names, but Tesla, which has really, really failed, is now up a good amount to start the year. Undercut last month's low, closed inside. This is a monster downtrend, but when this thing rallies, she will rally back a lot, absolutely a lot. And the the peak, this is peak bearishness. Look at ADX, this is peak, peak levels of engagement. Okay, like they had at the high, we pretty much have that now at the low. Um, so it's definitely something to watch. And if you look here, the other names, it's a lot of the same stuff. What you don't want to own, EMPH, you don't want to own TNX, you don't want to own oil, right? You don't want commodities, DBC. These things are breaking down. And again, if bonds are going to rally it's because tnx is breaking down dbc's at the monthly 20 but look at that bear cross on the monthly 
Look at the EMA5, SMA10 pair cross on the monthly. The momentum is down. And if you look at the weekly chart, we've done the markup phase, we've done the distribution phase, and now the decline phase is about to begin. Commodities are going to get a lot cheaper in 2023. Um, we didn't look at the where we are in the business cycle. It's hard to say, but I want I'll, I'll, I'll do a different video discussing this because it will take up too much time. Um, bottom line, uh, take a look at my pinned tweet. Go to my profile if you want to take a look at this pinned tweet and you tell me what you think. Where do you think we are in the, in, in the business cycle? All right, that's all I got. I hope you guys have a great week and I'll see you next weekend.